Let me quickly and briefly review what is the concept of axi indeterminate axially loaded elements. What is the difference between that and what we have learned before, like the regular axially loaded elements, okay? We can do this problem. It's a very simple bolt, which is subjected to a force on top of that. Assume that we want to determine how much is the stress in that element. If we want to determine the stress in that element, we need to determine first how much is area, which is given here. I don't need to determine that. Then I need to determine how much is the force in that element, right? How can I determine the force? There is just one way, and that is free body diagram. To determine the internal force, I'm going to cut this bolt like this. Put unknown force outward from the cut surface, as shown here, and then use some of the forces equal to zero. In this case, some of the forces in the vertical direction, in the y direction. So P plus FB is equal to zero, okay? The force, the applied force, is given. So with that, I would say FB is equal to negative 100 Newton. Negative because it's compressive, okay? So it's very easy. We have determined the internal force in this element. Now, if I want to determine stress, I simply divide this force by area. So stress would be F over A. Area is given. Force is negative 100. And stress would be 1.25 megapascal with negative sign. Right? So this was a very simple problem. Like divide force by area, determine stress. Now let me change this problem a little bit. Instead of having just one bolt, I'm going to add one sleeve around that bolt, okay? In this case, we assume that there is a washer on top of that which connects that bolt to that sleeve. And we want to determine how much is stress in the bolt, also how much is stress in the sleeve. The procedure would be exactly the same. We need to determine how much are the forces in these elements. Also, we need to determine how much are the areas. Areas are provided, so that's easy. But how can I determine force? Again, I'm going to start with free body diagram. So I'm going to cut this element, say, halfway through. How many elements do we cut here? We cut two. So we need to put two unknown forces on the cut sections. One force would be the force in the bolt. I'm going to call that FB, similar to what we had before. And there will be another one, which is the force in the sleeve. Let's call it FS. OK? So we have two forces on the cut section and one applied force, external force, on top of the system. And I can write down the equilibrium equation in the y direction. That gives me P plus FB plus FS equal to 0. P is given. It's 100 Newton. I can then simplify the equation into this format. FB plus FS is equal to negative 100. What is the difference between this case and the case that we had here. So an additional unknown makes this problem more difficult. Why? Because we have just one equation. Is there any extra equation that I can use from the equilibrium that help me to determine the force in that element? If I use some of the force in the x direction, does it help me? No. Some of the moments? No. If I want to solve it, I need to find a relation between deformations in the element. This technique is called stiffness technique. Let's determine how much is the deformation in each of these two elements, in the sleeve and in the bar. Deformation, as we discussed before, would be FL over EA. F is unknown, but the rest of those parameters are given. Length of the bolt is 120 millimeter. <coughs> Modulus of elasticity is 200 gigapascal. We need to convert that into megapascal. And area is 80 millimeter, 80 squared millimeter. With that, that simplifies to FB over 133,333. So we have determined the formation in terms of force. Let's repeat that for the second element that we have for the sleeve. For the second element, we use the same equation, FL over EA but we use the parameters related for that sleeve. Force in that element is unknown. Length is 120. Modulus of elasticity is 140 gigapascal. And area is 150 squared millimeter. And that simplifies to Fs divided by 175,000. So we have determined 
the deformations in terms of force. Now we get to the core of this problem, to the most important step of this problem, and that is compatibility of deformation. What does it mean? We need to find what is the relation between deformation of different elements that we have here. Let's look into this problem. Say the bolt is compressing, is getting shorter by one millimeter because of the applied force. How much do you expect to have deformation in the sleeve around that? Same, less, more. It would be same. Why this is the same as the bolt? Because they are attached together fully and at the end. Delta B is equal to delta S. And I can plug the values from the deformation that I got in step number two and write it like this. FB over 133,000 is equal to FS divided by 175,000. And I can simplify that into this form. FB is 0.762 FS. Now, we got another relation between forces which help us to determine the, un the extra unknown that we have. So we have two equations and two unknowns that we can use for determining the unknowns in this problem. Okay? This is what I'm going to do in the last step, in the fourth step. And combining these two gives me 1.762 Fs equal to negative 100. And with that, I'm going to get these numbers as the internal forces. As you can see, the force is split between these two elements. And I got the proportion of this by using that compatibility of deformation. This is the important part. Compare it with what we have done before. In the previous case, we simply use the free body diagram to determine how much is the force, right? In this case, we had to take four steps to determine that. Once we determine the force, the last part is very easy. If I want to determine how much is stress, what do, I, what do I need to do? Simply divide force by area, right? So let me do that here. Stress in sleeve is force divided by area. Force is calculated to be negative 56.8. And area is 150 squared millimeter, and we get 0.379 megapascal. Similarly, stressing the bolt would be force over area, and I'm going to plug force and area, and we get 0.54 megapascal as stress in that element. Determining it problems are very easy because determining the force in those, in those structures are very easy. However, the indeterminate problems are more complicated, and all the difficulty is in this part, how to determine the force. But the point is, we have just four steps, and if you know to, how to solve that for a certain problem, you just need to follow those steps to solve the same problem in the every single indeterminate problems that you might have.